Hi all, welcome back to Bam Glam DIY. On today's edition, I will be talking about preservatives that we use in our cosmetic products and in our cleaning products. First of all, some of us will want to know what is this preservative you've been hearing about it. They are actually antimicrobial agents. We add them in our products, cosmetic, cleaning agents, and even food to be able to prevent the growth of microorganisms. We use it to prevent the growth of mold, yeast, uh, bacteria, fungi. We inhibit the growth of these microbial activities and also reduce the way they may actually affect that product and deter the product or contaminate the product itself. You might be wondering why do you need this preservative if you want to maintain the characteristics of your products you need preservatives so in this particular video i'll be talking about the classes of uh, preservatives i'll talk about their types and i'll also talk about their usage rates this video is very crucial to anybody who is into production so please save this video share this video and like this video for the classes of these preservatives so many persons group it different ways i'm grouping them based on how the chemicals are different from each other so we have the parabens for the first one we have the formaldehyde releasers some of sometimes you see them called formaldehyde donors we have the isothiazolinones we have the phenoxyethanol which is very popular and then for the fifth one, we have the organic acid. Like I said, this is the way I group them based on their chemical differences. Some persons may group them as natural, synthetic, and uh, probably organic. But I group them based on their chemical properties. There are different other classes you may see online. Now, for their types, let's take them one by one. For the parabens. I know you've been hearing about parabens, 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 parabens. Now, these parabens, their types include the jamaben, methyl paraben, propyl paraben. These parabens, you normally see them in hair products, right? In fact, practically most cosmetic products that are even being imported in my country contains paraben. Do you know they have a very low usage rate of up to 0.01 to 0.03 percent that's very low that means if you are using methyl paraben you will save more money compared to using others that means it is cost effective in products that is why these producers use it for these parabens and the most popular one i know of is methyl paraben even the rest that is on the list i've not me personally have not seen them but that does not mean that they are not existing companies do use them like i mentioned before it is very economical their usage rate is very low from 0.01 to 0.3 and do you know that they are very effective against fungi even mold and yeast and then effective on gram positive bacteria that means if you want to use them you need to combine another preservative that can work on gram negative bacteria if you are working in a company and then you can use it on both on both uh, rinse out uh, kind of cosmetic product and even leave on product so if the product is meant to be left on your body like body cream you can use it if the product is supposed to be rinsed out you can use it now let's talk about formaldehyde releasers this formaldehyde releasers their usage rate exists between 0.5 to 1.5 percent in some cases and some literatures online you will see 0.5 to 1 percent only it's just a few literatures I consulted that actually increased it up to 1.5%. That means it is still a little bit low, but not as low as the paraben families. And you must be wondering what is this formaldehyde re releasers. Sometimes they are also being called formaldehyde donors and they are the, one of the most popular of them all. These formaldehyde releasers, I use it more often. This is where your liquid Jama Plus falling. Be sure to know that this Jama Plus can actually be liquid. It can also be powder though. That is why when I'm doing my production and I say liquid Jama Plus, know that I'm using the liquid form of it in case you go to the market and see uh, the powdered form of it. So this is where the forms of the urea, the diazolidine, 
and the hydantoin and the jamal plus falls in they are called the formaldehyde releasers because they release this formaldehyde in a, they maintain uh the the way they release it into the into the product in a very little form to be able to maintain that product to be able to preserve that product and prevent these uh, microbes to actually act on your product this class of preservative is popularly used in the market so many of us are really wondering they always ask me in my videos probably maybe liquid soap or so what type of preservative should i use please i did not see this one what to, which one should i use please pay attention to this video so that you see all the list of preservatives in the market you can note it down and save this video so that you can always be able to find them in the market how do they affect us the the, the bacteria they are effective on bacteria but they are weak of fungal activities remember i told you that they release this formaldehyde as needed but in a very maintained low levels so you can actually combine jama plus with another one that does not mean that only jama plus will save your product that is why when you turn big brands when you turn the back of their product you see them using up to two or even three they are trying to combine to be able to uh, weight off both the fungi, the bacteria, the gram negative, the gram positive, the molds, and the yeast to prevent them from even acting in their products, thereby promoting their shelf life. It is written that the preservative properties of these formaldehyde releasers are highly valued because they are antibacterial and thus ideal for industries and products such as food medicine and skincare formaldehyde is made up of hydrogen oxygen and carbon and it's thus the simplest of all the aldehydes so they actually form under the aldehyde families just by the name implies formaldehyde releasers or formaldehyde donors so the third class we'll be dealing with is this isothiazolinones they are not very popular in the market there is one they call methyl isothiazolinones that is oxyl there, there are different types of it but it's like i said it's not very popular the usage rate is from 6 ppm to 75 ppm they are actually sulfur containing compounds you see them in most household cleaning uh, products you even see them in self-care products like shampoos but you see them in cleaning products too and washing materials like a dishwashing liquid you even see them in cosmetics but not much like i said they are not very very popular one of the very known example of this iso tires only known is carton like i said there are very few in the market and you if you actually browse more to read more about it you may actually encounter other types but know that they are sulfur containing Isothiazolinones, they are actually broad spectrum and they are very effective. And then they are best for rinse off products. They are not good for leave on products like leave in conditioner, body cream, uh, face cream. Don't use it for uh, leave on products. They are actually effective on practically entire pH range, normally encountered in making cosmetics. You understand and they but also bear in mind that they may cause skin irritation for some consumers so some consumers it may not react to them for some consumers it may actually react to them so you as a producer in your company you should bear it in mind when you are choosing it as an option for your product for the next let's talk about the phenoxy ethanol they are actually also called glycol Estas, in case you are browsing online or you try to read up, you may see them grouped under glycol esters. You may also see them called the phenoxy ethanol. Just know that they are practically the same thing. Their recommended usage rate is actually from 0.75 to 1.5 percent, but it is restricted to 1 percent in Europe and Japan. It performs best in pH 7, but also it is proven to be effective at pH levels that is even up to pH 10. 
But bear in mind that whenever you are using phenoxyethanol, that the best pH range for you to be able to be effective should fall between 4 to 10. But like I said, if your company is in EU or Japan, it should not exceed 1%. This is where your optifine falls under. So when you buy phenoxyethanol in the market, you're actually buying optifine. So you're hearing some products that say use optifine when you're optifine, uh, probably when they are making lip balm or oil production or butters. So phenoxyethanol is very good with oil productions. And then Optifine Plus. Optifine Plus is just, will I say, a, another derivative of it. It contains this phenoxyethanol and another thing that makes it plus. So whenever you see the plus, you just know that it has another compound in it and it's making it very strong. I've seen it in children's hair detangler. I've seen it in shampoos. I've seen it in uh, conditioners. I've seen it in a whole lot of products. Optifine Plus. Some people just write phenoxyethanol, optifine plus. I've seen even the both of them in one product. One of them is one hair, children's kids, detangular I have at home. So this phenoxyethanol is actually considered to be very mild. That's why people use it a lot. It is not broad spectrum by itself. It is often combined with this caproglycol or potassium solvent or even EDTA to be able to create the one that is broad spectrum efficacy it is also very stable when used in products the last on the list today is they are called organic acids it is one of the most popular and the most random food uh, preservatives that is being used out there it is actually most of them that are organic acid are mostly used in food but that doesn't mean that you can't see them being used in cosmetic products too or cleaning products too and then they are very okay to be used on uh, on both rinse off and even living but their usage rates are quite high from 0.5 percent to two percent in fact to be to tell you the truth about them some of them you have to use them up to two percent so they are not very economical you have because you have to use like a whole large volume of it to be able to make your production that means if you are making a one kg batch you need probably up to 20 grams of, of organic acid to be able to use it as your preservative compared to the 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 first class which we called the parabens so now for this type the types of the organic acids this is where your sodium benzoate falls under this is where your potassium sorbet falls under sodium benzoate is actually like a white powdered substance they use it in cake in baking things the juices you take the drinks you buy food mostly food products and then you see it in fabric softener you see it in some other products and then some other acids fall under this uh, organic acid i don't know why they call it organic but because they're actually made uh, they actually made uh, synthetically all the same the function let's talk about their functions and their effects I mentioned it before that due to the high usage rate it is not very cost effective they are very effective against fungi but with weak efficacy against bacteria bear that in mind bear that in mind and then they are considered to be natural alternative but though they are often made synthetically I mentioned that before if you use them in a high water content it may precipitate and then they require a pH of about two to six so it means that the product pH has to fall between pH two to six for this organic acid to be active now let's talk about why do you even need this preservative we'll be talking about preservative preservative why do you need it see if you don't want your product to deteriorate what I mean is you don't want it to go bad due to the presence of microorganisms in it going bad in essence in in the forms of producing foul smell your colors may change your textures and viscosities may change uh if it was white before or cream before it may turn yellow 
and most of these basic characteristics of your products may actually deter due to the presence of microorganisms in your product so many of us experience it i started it was yellow color after two weeks it changed it was smelling nice after a few weeks it started smelling bad oh just know that it's preservatives so please to maintain your product attributes and to keep it safe from harming human beings please you need preservatives in your products please I've talked about a lot of a, a, so many types of it so you can choose the ones you wish to work with you can also combine if you wish to work with I know this video is a very crucial video to all producers out there so please do well to like and share this video save this video in your phone because you don't know who might actually need it from you please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you